Last year I woke up with that sound in both eardrums as I got out of the bed and walked to the restroom. One morning, I was off work and it was the sweetest sound. I'm gonna let it play in the background while I'm reading the scripture. Um, frequency has a way of making you feel better. It is proven scientifically. <clears throat> it's how the enemy also uses music to get people in his kingdom. Uh, and when you, some about hearing that blow, just internally just lifts my spirit. I don't know. It's just, just nothing. Just that, that sound. Okay. <laughs> nothing else like it. Uh, you know, nothing else like it. I could just listen to that all day. Matter of fact, I have at work in my earbuds, and I felt great the whole entire day, okay? Now, let me get to something. Sister Marcia texted me last night about reading Isaiah 42, okay? Um, I guess the word came to her, and she texted to me and said, when you get a chance, can you read Isaiah 42 and hear what the Holy Spirit gives you? So I sat here last night watching some videos on our nuclear situation and just kind of rang true what that scripture was saying. I'm going to give you what I'm going to, you know, what I pulled from it kind of goes along with what I've been talking about for the last week or so. But in case you don't know, the book of Isaiah is a mini Bible. It has 66 books in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is, is said to be a, the whole Bible, you know, uh, shrunken down or condensed in Isaiah. Because there are things uh, in 42 that I have read in Revelation. Okay. So, by the way, it is Wednesday morning. It is 7.17 in the morning as I'm starting this. We got the shofar blowing in the background. And let's go up to verse 42, or chapter 42, rather. And let's give this a read, because when I read it last night, I was like, oh, that's kind of like some good meat in here. Okay, we're going to read the whole thing. So, there's not going to be an eight-minute video. Okay, just to let you know. So, if we start, where's my mouse at? Do I need my mouse? I think I do. I'm on the laptop today. So, let's break out the mouse. Sometimes it's just a lot easier than doing this with the finger. Uh, <laughs> it just is. Okay, so, there we go. All right, now it says this. Behold my servant, whom I uphold my elect. In whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Who is him? Is God speaking? Behold my servant, whom I uphold, mine elect. It's got to be the most high Yah speaking. In whom his soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. Who is him? Son of God, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. He shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. Most High Yah is talking about his son, Jesus, Yeshua. Okay. Verse four, he shall not fail again. Verse four, he shall not fail nor be discouraged till he has, until he has set judgment in the earth and the isles shall wait for his law. 
Verse 5, thus says God, the Lord, he has created the heavens. He, we're talking about God is speaking, speaking about his son. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. But Christ created all things because there's nothing made that's made that wasn't made by him. Okay, verse 5 again. Thus says God the Lord, he that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth, that which come out of it. He came out of the earth on the third day. Created something, and then he was put in it, just as Jonah was. Came out of it, but he was sat in a well and came out of it. Y'all get that? So when you're reading these verses, just don't blow through them. Take your time and chew. Okay? Because if you just take big bites, you're not digesting your food properly. Same thing with the word. Okay? So, again, verse 6. No, let's go back to 5. We didn't finish 5. He stretched them out and he spread forth the earth, that which he came out of. He that give breath unto the people upon it and the spirit to them that they walk therein. We walk in that spirit right now. We walk in that spirit. Verse six, the Lord have called you in righteousness. Thee means you. It's point to yourself. He's called us in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. We're supposed to be the light of the earth, salt of the earth, okay? To open blind eyes. You know, you should have never took that. I know what I'm doing. You know that once always that you believe in, you ain't got to repent. You know you's not. You know that's not correct, right? I ain't got to repent. The Lord already did it. That's works. That's law. Okay. The blind eyes. To bring out the prisoners from prison. Right now, the Holy Spirit, God says, I'm pouring out my spirit on all flesh. And there has been such a move of getting people, to, and I, me, myself, here on both channels, and I've heard it from other folks that's been sending me videos. People, the Holy Spirit has been saying the same thing through all of us, but just in a different way. The door to the ark is closing. It is time for you to come out of prison. The gates of hell will not prevail. Okay. Okay. How scary they look. Greater is he that is within us. We should walk right up to them gates and start snatching folks out of prison. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. People are in prison right now, folks. And the Holy Spirit led and fed, been putting on my heart this dispensation of grace, period. There is time to repent. There is time to ask for forgiveness. That window is closing, closing, closing until there's nothing. And that no man can open it once God shuts it. Okay? To open blind eyes, bring out the prisoners from the prisons. And them that sit in darkness out of the prison. I was just on Twitter. And so many people. Oh, rapture's not real. How I mean, how long have we been going through this? How long you guys been saying that? Jesus ain't real. God ain't real. Some people just don't have eyes. And we can't save everybody. Okay? But there are people who have eyes and they've been blinded. They've been shielded. And they're in prison. Verse 8. Number 8, New Beginnings. And I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory will I give not to another, neither my praise to graven images. Graven images is what's been put in, folks, due to the giraffine peroxide and the nanotechnology. They are graven images, 50. 15 billion images are being put in, folks, per dose. And you got these folks running around. They say out of their mouth, we gave it. When you take it, it won't make you sick. You won't get it. You won't train. Then they turn around. Oh, that was a lie. But then the week after, they're on TV getting a, a fourth and a fifth one. 
putting those graven images in their body in the form of metal, iron, and clay. Behold, the former things are come to pass. This is what I said about the whole book of Isaiah is a smaller crunched version of the whole entire Bible because Jesus, God says this in Revelation. I believe it's 21. 20 or 21, he says this. The former things are passed away. And new things I do declare. Before your, well, before they spring forth, I often tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord, verse 10, a new song and his praise from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea and all them that therein and the isles and the habitations thereof. Verse 11, let the wilderness of the cities therefore lift up their voice and the villages that, that Kadar does inhabit. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Let them shout from the tops of the mountains. Let them give glory, verse 12, unto the Lord and declare his praise in the islands. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, ye roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Verse 14, I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman and I will destroy and devour at once. Long suffering, held his peace, gave Noah a hundred years before he destroyed at once. When this rapture takes place, it will be judgment on the church and those that are left behind after we hear that. Those that don't hear it, oh my God, this is real, oh my God, you know, hollering and crying and screaming. And those that are left behind, there will be a quickening in them that will move this revival. They will understand what is really real. And they will move on this earth. And they'll die for it. Because he's going to destroy it at once. The rapture will be, oh, it's a false doctrine. You know, all these idiots. I ain't got time to play games with folks no more. You're an idiot. And you read out of the same book. You, you are some type of dope. Okay. Sorry. All throughout scripture, he's given us examples. How he pulls the righteous out first. Then comes destruction. What kind of God would he be to let us go through destruction? What kind of sickness is that in people that says, oh, we have to be destroyed? Then Christ never rose from the grave. Do you understand what you're saying when you say that? It's blasphemy at the highest level. You are... Upsetting the Holy Ghost. <laughs> We're going to go through what well, Jesus. Well, so, so why do you call on his name then? If you don't believe that he comes to save before destruction comes. That was his whole purpose. He took a demotion to come down here and mess with us. Die for us. Bury. Rose on the third day. He did that for me and you. But yet people will still say, oh, that's not true. Okay, boo boo. <laughs> you will have what you say okay you're gonna get it all you're gonna get every nook and cranny all up to your eyeballs and pass it you're gonna get it all because he gives those to what's in their heart that's what that's what you want in your heart that's what you believe that's what you ain't no 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 i'm sorry it's gonna be too late don't be too late don't be too late. Verse 15. I will make waste mountains and hills. He will. The Bible says in the Old Testament, he would come down and touch the mountains and the mountains would melt at his presence. That's powerful. He will move mountains. He will waste mountains and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers, the, the rivers islands. And I will dry up the pools. I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have known not. I will make darkness light before them and the crooked things straight. 
These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. Some of these hard-headed folks, they're going to have to see Thomas. I don't believe until I touch. That's not faith. Some people don't have any faith right now, and they're walking around faithless, and they have this Thomas uh, uh, belief about them, this thing going on where they don't believe by faith. They won't believe, ladies and gentlemen, until planes crash, cars crash, babies disappearing, or they're talking to somebody and all of a sudden clothes just drop. Then they'll believe. But by that time, you're going to be under a different grace, dispensation of grace and, and the spirit of peace, God's patience, long suffering will be gone and utter t uh, uh, torment from visible and seen will hit this earth. It will hit this earth. And then you, those are going to be the hardcore folks. As they, as the young folks say in the street today, you're going to have to get it out of the mud the hard way. Okay. This is not the way you want to go. Isaiah chapter 42. Okay. This is what he's talking about. People are blind. And he's trying to wake people up during this time. I'm giving you all this information about this, this whole vaccine, this whole vexation. This pestilence is all fake. We already knew it. But now I'm making the devil tell the truth for a certain time to wake people, to bring them out of the prisons, to open up their blind eyes, to let them see something that they didn't see before that we saw we was trying to help them see. So God said, okay, well, you don't want to listen to my servants. Let me let them, let me, let me cause my uh, uh, dirty servants to tell the truth. What did you do at the time? Did you pay attention when I was making this, this information known to you for free? Giving it to you so you could wake up? But instead, you still ran to Baal, to the sacrifice table, and rolled your sleeve up? You still never repented? You still never asked for forgiveness and never forgave? You still never did that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go. Let's continue. Let's finish this on out. Let's go back to 17. Drop from 16, 17. They shall be turned back. They shall greatly be ashamed. That trust engraven images that they that, that say to molten images, you are our gods. Don't you know they got that beastly looking creature? They erected a statue to it at the UN, the leopard with the different mixtures of animal parts on it. Now, let me tell you something, graven images. Remember in the time of Moses, when he went to the mountain to get the law, to get the Torah from God, and they told Aaron, bring Aaron all your gold. We don't have a leader. Let's make a calf. That same gold casket that they buried George Floyd in and lifted him up. A sinner, a known dope dealer, robbed a pregnant woman at gunpoint, put the gun to her belly, robbed her. They made that dude an idol, buried him in a gold casket. See how Satan worked? And people didn't even pay no attention to that. You lifting up a sinner... In his sinful activity, he was high on dope the day that they arrest. Let me hold up. He could have gave his life to Christ at the very end. But it's the fact on the outside what we see. What they did. Nancy Pelosi, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life. What? This same chick that said, we don't, we're not inflation. The inflation's not going up. It's the cost of living. That's inflation. These some dizzy people out here, folks. Super dizzy. I'm getting off track. I am, but I'm not. Let me go back to 17. It says, those that trust their, uh, put their trust in graven images. 
say to the molten images, means they melted them and put them together. Folks, that's what's in you right now when you take that goof juice. It's graven molten images. 15 billion per dose. And say, you are our gods. That's what people are doing right now. And God is saying, I'm trying to tell you to repent from that thing that you've done before the door closes. Hear ye deaf, and look, verse 18, ye blind that you may see. You've been deaf, they've deafed your ears, they've put it, they filled it with cotton, <laughs> and they've covered your eyes. Even here, God is saying, I know what you did. Just like our parents back in the day, I would, I, you know, I grew up on belts. But I'm, I'm going to give you one more chance to tell the truth before I put this belt on your behind. And people will lie all the way to the, and be in denial all the way to the lake of fire. You don't think God already didn't know? Jeremiah 1 and 5, I already knew what you was going to do. But I'm giving you a chance to get right with me. Hmm, verse 19, who is blind? Who is blind? This is a question, comma. Who is blind but my servant or deaf? As my messenger that I sent. Who is blind as he that is perfect. And blind as the Lord's servant. Questions. Who is blind. But my servant. Question mark. Or deaf as my messenger that I sent. Question mark. Who is blind as he that is perfect. And blind as the Lord's servant. Question mark. We're not blind. We're not deaf, we're not dumb, we're not stupid. We see what's going on. He ain't talking about us. You can't be blind, deaf, dumb, and stupid and still lay down with the serpent. Can't be. Can't serve too. Seeing many things, but you observe not. Open the ears, but hear not. How many times have we told folks, yo, don't, I know what I'm doing. Okay. Hey. I'm showing you so you can see. I don't want to see that. That's just a bunch of conspiracy stuff. That's the, they would never lie to us. Okay. Verse 20, seeing many things, but thou observe not. You see all of this stuff, but you don't observe. That's a trip how people can be looking the same. We could be looking at the same thing and you don't see it. Open ears, but hear not. A lot of people ain't going to hear that trumpet blast. They hear, but they ain't going to hear that. Let that cook in your pot. Seeing many things, but observe not. Opening ears, but hear not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. This is a people robbed and spoiled. You have been robbed of your crown and your eternal life if you don't repent. And you've been spoiled by the great merchants of the earth and their sorceries and the harlot. They are all of them snared in holes. My, my, my. And they are hid in prison houses. We talking about spiritually. They are for a prey. They've been eaten up every day. And none delivered. For a spoil and none says restore. The only way you can be restored is if you repent. And turn from your wicked ways. Whom among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear from the time to come? For the time to come. Who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers? Question mark. Did not the Lord, he against whom we have sinned? For they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Therefore he has poured upon him the fury of his anger 
and the strength of battle. And it has set him on fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him. Yet he laid it not to heart. A lot of people are trying to figure out why they're going to be roasted, but they're not going to be able to figure out why. Because you've been blind, you've been deaf, dumbed down, in prison. You have been under full delusion. And there's just some people that will not come out of it. They want to be plugged in to the matrix. Coffee break. And so, these are the things that are happening right now. Isaiah 42. The word of God is the living word. The living word of God. The living word, the word is alive. Who is the word? Jesus Christ. Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Hebrew, and the Gentile, Jesus. Okay? Let me do this before I close. I hear the Holy Spirit saying, do this. Do this. Before we close this morning. You got to get on up. Depending on what time you're watching this. Because <laughs> obviously it's getting ready to go up by about 8 o'clock this morning. Okay. Ten names of God that and what they mean. The Elohim. God is Elohim. He is your creator. Point to yourself. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's number one. The Elohim. God the creator. The Elohim Shayim, the living God. God told God today, you will know that the living God is among you. Joshua 3 and 10. Joshua is another name for Jesus. Yeshua. Abba, we all know this one. Even Satan recognizes that God is his father. Okay. Number four, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Sometime you might need him to be all ten names in one day. He provides for us every day. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace. God is Jehovah Shalom. Now let me say this in front. I know some of you folks out there might be Hebrew Israelites or whatever. And get caught up. Some of them, you know, they come in the comments and say, you shouldn't be calling his name Jesus. Hold up, Doc. You wasn't in that bathroom with me 10, 15, 20 years ago when I needed help. Whose name did I call on that time as a Gentile? Well, we're not the Gentiles. We're this. Listen, just stop that. You're getting caught up in what you think you are. It don't matter what you think you are. Because if you ain't right with God through repentance, it don't matter what you call yourself. You can call yourself a... a, 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 a you can call yourself whatever. Voltron, lion, teenage ninja, mutant turtle. You can call whatever you want to call yourself. Walking around with them Power Ranger outfits on. But if you ain't right spiritually, don't matter what you call him. He said, my name has weight. Yours doesn't. But Lord, Lord, we, we did all of this in your name. We should be good. I ain't got no relationship with you. You can open up a bank account. But if you don't put no money in it. When you need to go in there and get some money, guess what? If you ain't putting nothing in it, you ain't getting nothing out. Okay? L, it says El Elyon, the Most High God. God is El Elyon. He is your sovereign God. Sovereign. El Cana, this is one of my favorite. Jealous God. Understand this, folks. When people, as I just read in Isaiah 42, those graven images, every time we read the scripture, you read it 10 years ago, we would have thought graven images meant something else. That's why it's the living word. His, his, his word doesn't return void. That, that word don't never fail. So it may mean something 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, six months ago, yesterday. Them graven images. Oh, now today those graven images are in the form of particles that have been graven, cut, and then put in. 
And these people worship these graven images. They're out here trying to get you to worship them, talking about how great they are to have in you. God is jealous over there. Does these people make that more their God than God himself? Elkanah, the jealous God. You must worship no other gods. Notice that. Let me blow this up for you for real. Notice that that God is a lowercase g. Whose name is jealous. Is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. Relationship. Do you have? A relationship. How much time are you spending with El Cana? He's jealous of his relationship with you. You ain't got no other gods before me. We may have gods on this earth. Trust and believe you do. Whether it be your job, your house, your living situation, your car, there are gods in our life. Don't let's not front and say, I ain't got none. Yes, you do. It's whatever you put a lot of time into and you do it on a frequent basis. Okay. That's not even front and say you ain't got no gods. You do. We all have them. He said it. You will worship no other gods before me. You can have your football, your sports. You can have your little car. You can have your little job. I know you need your little money to work. You got your clothes and everything. I gave that to you. But if you do that more, if, if you spend more time with those, then you are out of pocket. That's what God is saying. A lot of people have done it. Music and entertainers do it and they get people to do it because they have a following. Jewels and diamonds and all this stuff everybody likes to promote. Those are gods to them. Your Christmas tree is a god to you. When you dress it up and prop it up and stand it in your house and God said, don't do that. That was made for the mother whose son died. She thought she could worship his spirit of him by cutting down a tree and dressing it up. That's where Christmas came. It ain't got nothing to do with Yeshua. Okay. I'm just giving you a little snippet so you can look that up. I'm not going to give you the whole thing. A little homework for you. Verse 8. El Roa. The God who sees. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoke to her. She said, you are the God who sees me. She also said, I have truly seen the one who sees me. Question mark. He's the God that sees. Jehovah Roi, the God, the shepherd. He's our shepherd. Here's the last one. He is Jehovah Nissi. The Lord, our banner. God is Jehovah Nissi. He is, or Nissi, depending on how you want to pronounce it. He is my banner. Moses built an altar there and named it Yahweh Nissi, or Nissi, which means the Lord is my banner. Banners were not foreign to people of Israel and were often attached to bearer poles or standards. The banner, the banner represents deliverance and salvation. Mm -hmm. So, hope this has been a good lesson for you on today. 35 minutes. Sister Marsha will be back on YouTube for those of you who are watching this video. Uh, she's been put on punishment by ScumTube for telling the truth. As I have been many a times, nothing new. That's what they do. Pretty soon we won't have to worry about it because we'll be standing in front of the truth. Amen. We are sinners in need of a Savior. And who is that Savior? Jesus Christ. That's our Savior. That's our Savior. So if you're watching this video today, and for whatever reason, if you're not sure, that if you die today, 
Are you going to make it? How to be saved. Are you saved? Somebody sent you this video. There's many scriptures in the Bible that talk about this. Ephesians 2 and 8 through 10. By grace you are saved through faith. Okay? That not of yourselves, it is a gift. The gift was given to us on the third day. Okay? But, you know, some crowds will take that verse and use it the wrong way. But that gift comes through building a relationship with him. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, in other words, you mid and post tribbers, which I debunked you many times, because nobody repents in the time of tribulation. Nobody repents. You can look it up, do a word search. They repent not. Because if you believe on him, you will not perish. If you go through the tribulational period, you're going to perish. Billions will die. You're going to perish. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay? Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What, what must you do to be saved? You must believe that Jesus Christ was risen from the grave on the third day. And that Abba the Father raised him on the third day. And why did he do that? He died so that our sins may be forgiven. It doesn't say they will be. It says may be forgiven means the only way may becomes will is if you develop that relationship with him and if, if you repent, as Peter said. So the reason why it says may be forgiven is because of that word repent. If you don't repent, you are not forgiven. If you don't do a 180 and turn from them things. Sometimes we have to repent every day because there's things that we do that we don't even know we do by memory, by the way we act. What we say is not pleasing to the Most High Yah. We still must do that. Because we're not walking in perfection yet. We're still in, these, in this dirty, filthy world. We're still in these raggedy bodies. We still can get in the flesh from time to time. Can't tell me you don't get in the flesh when you're out here driving. I got to deal with folks when they drive. You can easily get in the flesh. Yo, children can make you get in the flesh. Co-workers can make you get in the flesh. Okay? So, remember folks, we are at a time at war, spiritual warfare right now. Not just with the threat of bombs. We are bombarded on every side right now. I know this is a long video. This is one of the ones that you need to watch. Some people even watch them more than once. We got people from all over the world, at least any man should boast, all over the world, watching both channels as other folks do. Because this is how the word gets to the ends of the earth, through technology. That's what he put it here for. Other people use it for satanic things, but we're using it for godly things. I've seen you folks coming from Australia, Germany. I've seen you from uh, uh, Europe uh, commenting. God is not in a little box, as I said the other day. He's not. Not in a little box. Stop putting him in a little box. Exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could think or even ask for. That's how much greater he is. Okay? And every day, while we still continue to wait on that trumpet, that, that, that horn to blow, we stay in this book. Stay in this book. Stay in the book. Stay in the book. Read every day. Before you get up and go about your business, find you a verse and meditate on it every single day. When you get up in the morning, before you go to bed, hit your knees, lay out, prostrate before the Lord. When he wakes you up between one and four to use the bathroom, pray, in the, pray right there in the bathroom. What did he tell his servants? What did he tell his apostles? Could you not stay awake at least one hour and watch? It's those that, I don't know man, no hour. No, Jesus told, watch and pray. 
continue to watch and pray and don't be discouraged. Second Thessalonians talks about comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. We should be rejoicing right now, ladies and gentlemen, about what we're looking at, what we, what's going on in this world. He said, look up when you see these things. Okay? Be ready. Go to sleep with your boots on and your camouflage fatigues. Go to just That's what I mean by stay ready, get ready. You ain't got to worry about, oh, my God, where my shoes at? I got to get up and put my boots. No, if you walk around like that all day, I'm ready. Even if I'm in my pajamas, I'm in. The, I'm spiritually. I'm ready. Ready. All right, folks. I will talk to you on the next one. Let this word bless you, edify your spirit and your soul, and keep your mind right, and keep your full armor on, because Jesus got our back. The armor is to protect our front. Okay. Peace out.